Let's go to the eagle of the north to open our minds. And let's go to the condor of the south to open our hearts. are times that are very accelerating as probably most of you feel the energy is intensified. Uh, Washington Tapia, Washington Kibaka Tapia, mm. um, is what we would call a shaman. And I say that with quotations because it's a word that we use, but there really isn't a word to describe what it is um, that someone that has the wisdom and that has been taught and that practices it every single day. Um, someone that connects with the earth, you know, with the rivers, with the mountains, with the plants, with the animals, every day. That connection, that connectivity that uh, he embodies. And so he is here to share some of what he knows. I think more than sharing knowledge, it's about really being able to pierce one's heart so that one can feel that knowledge and you can start to embody that knowledge. For our ancestors, time wasn't really important. If you go to the native communities where we come from, you ask a healer, a man or a female, how old are you? And they will say, I don't know. I don't know how old I am. So age is not important and should not be important for us today because we are worried about age. For our communities, from zero to 20, we are babies. From 21 to 40, we are adolescents. From 41 to 60, we are young. From 61 to 80, we are matures. From 81 to 100, we are wise. So age is not important. So what is important to them in the ancient communities around the world is what we live in the spiritual path for the children of our children. Not just thinking about 50 years from now, thinking about 500, 1,000 years later, is why they built this amazing site, vortices in Peru, in the Inca civilization, 360 vortices, 360 temples, where they spent no less than 100, 200 years to build them but they didn't finish because the first leader started them and the last one was continue building them. So there were not, I will live 50 years and I have to do it now just for me to enjoy it. No, it was for the future because they knew that they are going to be born again, not just in this body, could be in a hummingbird, in a flower, in this tree, whatever, but I am going to be born here. So I, sh I have to make sure that I build something that I am going to enjoy without changing nature, Mother Earth. If we work together as a community, like we are today, if we share our energy, we open our hearts and our mind, we will be able to do it. It's, it's possible to do it. So these ancient people had thought three things so they could be able to do and to manifest a lot of things. And the way that they are going to do it is very simple. There is three words for that. One is Aini. Like we were talking earlier, Aini means I help you today, but you help me tomorrow. I help you today, 
to make your adobe bricks and you help me tomorrow to make my adobe bricks and I help you next to build your house but you help me to build my house. The second way of working is minka means community work because in the ancestors the Incas or the Anasazis or the any civilization that existed in earth of course they were scientists they were engineers they were architects they were teachers they were healers psychologists they were all careers on those societies but the difference between us and them as that they all work as a community at least one hour for their community a month the Incas were 12 million people, 12 million. And they will work together one day a month to build the schools, to build bridges, hospitals, temples, whatever is needed in the community. They are going to do it. So this is time to unite, to connect, to be balanced, to return the power to the women, to the native women around the world that has lost the power when the Spaniards arrived, for example. In the native communities, when the Spaniards arrived, because they were just men, they turned the power of the women very low. And the men power went very high. And we call that machismo. You know that word machismo, right? So in Peru, there is a lot of machismo still in the native communities. But the 2012 is to give back the women the power that they have lost so we can be in balance. Even the UN Nations says, if we educate a woman, she's going to make sure that her kids are educated. If we educate just a man, probably 50%. If we educate both, it's much better. Better decisions, choices, for the future, for the children of our children. So it's very important.